my channel. It's your girl Rachel and in today's video I am going to be going over three things to keep in mind when applying to QA roles. So if you want to stay tuned I'm going to give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate if you like this video before we get rolling. Alright so we're just going to jump into this video and the first thing to keep in mind when applying into QA roles is, so this is going to go hand in hand. So recruiters and your networking skills are going to be a huge plus in applying to QA roles. So I'm just speaking from my own experience. Having a recruiter has helped me get insights and even better opportunities than what I was looking at on my own. So I would really recommend getting in touch with a recruiter. And if you're wondering where is a good place to start, LinkedIn, but we're going to touch on that later on in the video. The second thing to keep in mind when applying for QA roles is to keep in mind the programming languages and the software tools that they are using. So the reason why I say keep in mind the programming tools and the languages and the software and the this and the that is because not all companies are using the same thing. Unfortunately, I wish they were, but this is going to roll into tip number three. So, tip number three to keep in mind when applying to QA roles is to have multiple resumes on hand. Yes, I said it. <laughs> Unfortunately, one resume isn't enough out here. And the reason why I say it's important to have multiple resumes on hand is because when you're looking at jobs, I'm going to make up a few scenarios for you. Let's say, you know, let's go apply to Apple. And the number one programming language they just so happen to be using right now is Python. Okay, so we just sent out our resume. We talked about Python. Now we're going to go over and apply to Netflix. And the number one programming language they're using over there is Java. Now, you could send the same resume that you sent over to Apple, but the reason why I say to have multiple resumes is because if you have two companies, for instance, like Apple's using Python and Netflix is using Java, the reason why you don't want to send the same resume to both is because one company like Apple might like the fact that you're listing Python as your number one programming language. But when Netflix takes a look at your resume and they see that your number one programming language is Python, they're just going to think, alright, well the number one programming language we use here is Java. Do I have to look through this whole resume to find Java listed in their relevant skills or is Java just going to be listed right there, popping out at me because that's what I'm looking for, for the next person I want to bring onto my team? Excuse me, there was a net. But that's my point why I say you want to have multiple resumes on hand. Because you want to send your Python resume over to Apple because that's their number one programming language. But you want to have your Java resume on hand, if this is a skill that you have, and you want to have that on hand for when you go to apply to a job such as Netflix that just so happens to have Java as their number one programming language. It'll make you seem more relevant, and it'll align more with what they're looking for. So that is why I say keep multiple resumes on hand, because who wants to take the time to revise their resume each and every time they go to apply to a new job. Do you want to sit there and change your resume up each time you go to apply to a new job? Because lo and behold, yes, I did do that in my early stages of applying to jobs. Until I had my resume, until I had my advisor give a little word of advice to the rest of the class and I talking about how you need to have multiple resumes ready because you need to adjust it to maximize your opportunity. So these are the three main tips to keep in mind when applying for a QA role. But I do have a bonus tip for you guys. So if you want to hear the bonus tip, stay tuned. 
But before we do that, I have to give a shout out to today's sponsor. What do we have in this luxurious suitcase here? Well, you know what? I'll show you! Now, some of you might be wondering, is this a screwdriver? A hair blow dryer? No! Lo and behold, we have a massage gun! So, you guys know that as an engineer, um, especially during this pandemic, I work from home. I sit in this very chair right here for 40 plus hours a week to win my job. And sitting in a chair, I know it's better than manual labor for a job, but sitting in a chair for that amount of time can cause some back and neck issues that a lot of people don't really talk about. And that's okay if you want to deal with your pain. But for those of you guys who want some alleviation and as much as you guys might want to go to a massage parlor, I'm pretty sure that's probably not the safest thing to do during this time. So, revolutionary massage guns are here! And I was like, oh, they actually have these? So I was so excited that they reached out to me and wanted me to test this, demo it, so you turn it on like, Bam! Got the little things like there, hit it at the wham, bam, right in the clam. Like, whoa, whoa. And you could use this like just about anywhere. Like they like I said, they got a whole thing about this, so they got like different options you want to use. They got the little guy for you, it comes with a charger, and this is phenomenal. I tried this yesterday for the first time on my back, and ooh, like who pays for $65 massages now at, like, a massage place when you can get a luxurious massage gun? Now, if you're wondering where this information can be located at, how about you scroll on down to my description box, and I'll leave all the information in there for you. But let's get back to the main topic of this video. So, before you leave here today, I think something to just keep in mind is maybe sometime this week, you know, set aside two, three hours to look at any social media platform that you are using to apply to these jobs. Are you using Indeed? Are you using LinkedIn? Are you using Monster? Set some time aside this week to just, you know, review these profiles or accounts if you have them. See if you can add anything, update them with some recent projects you're working on, and just it's nice to monitor your appearance on social media because first impressions are everything when new and potential employers are looking through your account to see, hmm, does this person qualify to be brought onto our team? So that's the bonus tip that I'm going to leave you guys with today. And these are the three main tips that you should keep in mind when applying to a QA role. If you guys have any other topics that you'd like for me to address, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. And if you aren't already a part of the family yet, what are you doing? Smack that subscribe and bell notification button so that you never miss another post from me again. I'll see you next time.